So today we're going to be looking at Integromat's Array Iterator and Array Aggregator modules. Now here's the Iterator module and here's the Aggregator module. Now I'll get to how they work in a minute, but first up let's have a look at the overall structure of this scenario. So what we're actually trying to achieve in this scenario is we've got an XML file coming in, comes in from a Google Drive folder, gets uploaded to that folder and that's a trigger. Then we're passing that XML file so we can read the data in our scenario. And for some of that data, it's actually pretty straightforward. It's just a query string, um, or we're just using the first array uh, integer uh, item in the array uh, to map to these fields. So what I mean by that is here is the data. And if we have a look here, here's the pass XML. So this is the data file that gets read. And you can see here that it's an array of email addresses and really, we just we just care about the first email address. We don't really care about email two or three or four in there. The first one will be fine for our purposes. We don't need to get complicated with that. But when it comes to the order, we've got all these sort of all this information about the order, but then we've also got all this information about ordered items. So an order might have ten items in it. Ten ordered items is what it's called here. And for each ordered item, each item has all this sort of information about it. So that's where we've got this nested array. We've got a complex array, and that's what we're using the array aggregator and array iterator modules for in this scenario. So this part of the scenario here, we're just creating and updating uh, contacts in zero. And then now we get down to some fun stuff. So now here we've got our first iterator module. Now what an iterator does is it takes a bundle of arrays, or it, it takes an array, sorry, or a collection of arrays, and it uh, it separates it out. So an array might have five objects within that array, and each of those objects might be an array with more information in it. it could be a complex array, and so you might have to iterate a couple of times uh, to get the data that you need out. In this case, we're looking at the client, the order, then we're looking inside. So we're looking at the client, then we're looking inside the order array looking inside the ordered items array, and then we're iterating the ordered item. So for each ordered item, we're gonna get a bundle generated here. So at this stage, there is one bundle, and that bundle is the one XML file from here. But now we're at the first root here, and we might generate 10 bundles with this iterator because there might be 10 ordered items. And so suddenly now we've got 10 things moving from here and doing the steps after this stage. So for each item, we're then finding it in zero. If it doesn't exist, then we create the item in zero, et cetera. Um, so that's, that's pretty straightforward. Then we've got this stage here where we're iterating this time the ordered items again, but now we're aggregating those ordered items and we're aggregating them into a target structure. And the target structure is the following module to this uh, aggregator. And that's really handy because you can basically create an array from one uh, system, from one uh, source, data source, where the array is in whatever format it is over there with the names and stuff that that system is using, the IDs and the values and the keys, etc. And we're trying to move that data over to another system that is using maybe slightly different or very different uh, keys that the same values need to be mapped to. And so for that instance, we're iterating all the items and then for each of the items, we're then bundling it up into an array. Uh, so what would happen here if we've got 10 items coming over, we've got 10 bundles and each of those bundles, we unbundle them here in this iterate items. And then we basically go, okay, well, we don't really have to change anything. We're just gonna change what we're calling those um, keys. And we're changing them to match the structure of the zero invoice, so the zero system. So the pro select or whatever other system over here, the other invoicing system is using different names. And so it wouldn't understand those names if we tried to push it into zero directly from there. So we have to convert it. And that's what that there does. And then what we're doing is we're using those products, the items, in an array for the invoice. So we've got an array of line items, and that's what we've set it up for there. So we've got 
10 line items created and bundled up and then written in that one step there on the invoice. Now an aggregator, even though there's 10 items here, 10 bundles, the aggregator catches all 10 items or bundles and then it pushes it back into one bundle. So you've got this one here, the iterator, separates it out into all these different bundles and anything in between would happen to each bundle. And then when it gets to the aggregator, it then compresses it all back into one bundle so that there's only one bundle going to this next step here. You don't have 10 going to this next, next step. Whereas up the top, we've got 10 because there's no aggregator. We're doing this for every single uh, object in the array. Now down here, we've got another iterator. And again, we're doing this for every single object in the array. So what this would mean if we've got 10 items, then we're finding each item individually. So this would run 10 times. And what happens is the first bundle runs and it will complete whatever steps we've got here for that first bundle. Then the second bundle will run. They don't run all at the same time. They do one after the other. Okay, and number one will do all the steps it can, and then it's finished. And number two will do all the steps again, and then it finishes. So we're finding the item. If the item uh, doesn't exist, then we create it, and uh, and then we add it to the product here. So that's uh, that's pretty much array iterators and aggregators in a nutshell. They can be quite complex, um, but they're very very useful. And it's something that Zapier doesn't have. A lot of those other automation systems don't have. Uh, array iterators or aggregators, but once you understand them, they can be very, very powerful for getting data out of one system and into another system. And that's really where uh, you do need to understand a little bit of basic um, JSON to understand how arrays work and all that sort of stuff. Uh, if you've got comments or you've got some notes, I'd love to hear about them. Leave a comment below. Uh, if you've got questions about array iterators or aggregators, and if it was if it's going to work for your particular situation, leave a comment. I'd love to uh, see if I can help you with that, and uh, and I'll talk to you in the next one. Hi, I'm Mitch Bayless, and if you're looking for someone to help you with your business automation, then click the button below to schedule your free call today. And if you found this video useful, remember to click like, and also subscribe to our channel for more videos.